seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Oh man, oh man, it's Wednesday night, it's 8 o'clock. Hopefully some of y'all have found us. It's Weeby Tailin'. I'm Captain Eric Hasty, and this is... I'm full. Full. We, we, we got we, to eat first. We did. Now we I'm did. just full, John King. You're full, John King. <laughs> so we, we got to hit up old Blackwater beforehand, <laughs> you know, so yeah, we're a little were full. they happy, because now they don't have to serve us late and go home late. <sighs> Yeah, they, they were happy. Yeah, but they was crowded. They were crowded. It took I us know. a little while, yep. John. It did. It, was <laughs> it good, took though. a while. I was getting <laughs> nervous. I was like, "We're not going to make it." <laughs> <laughs> that would be really bad. Oh, it would be. So, if you found us, that means you have found that we've started at a new time. Uh, we we tried to post it as much as possible that we were starting at eight o'clock. We talked about it last week, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully, there's some of you on that uh, know that we found our way at eight o'clock. Um, this Tyler, is going to be. Tyler got lost. Yeah, Tyler got lost. Saw that in the comments earlier. He said he's been waiting an hour. <laughs> so, uh, this is going to be our, our summertime pattern, if you will. I mean, so far it's working out well. We're well fed, um, uh -huh. you know, and uh, and, and, and we started on time. And we'll probably still get home earlier than if we uh, did it the other way around. That's probably so, true. Yeah, so I like it. So, um, and we can talk till 10 o'clock now. Well, there's no rush now, you yeah. know. So, if you go on a tangent, you know, it's not that big a deal, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Weeby Taylor. We're gonna have a good show for you tonight. Um, as usual, we're shooting live, we're still here in beautiful downtown Inglis. Nothing's changed, same beautiful. great show, it's just, just a new time, just darker. Well, it is, it's getting about yeah. dusk. It's it's the time it's when you guys are ready to come inside, twilight. grab you a toddy, put your feet up, and enjoy the show. Yep, it's twilight time. <laughs> so tonight we're going to have the weekend fishing. Uh, we're going to talk about some upcoming tournaments. Uh, tonight we're fishing for doormats. You know, Home Depot's got some really nice ones. You know, Lowe's, they got some nice doormats over there. You know, so we're fishing for those. What do you think? I need a new one. Do you? Yeah. Nobody comes to my house, so we don't got to yeah, wipe I don't have anybody yeah. come to my house either, but I, I still need a new one that's wore out. The dogs have wore it out. There you go. All right, John, let's see if anybody is actually watching this nonsense. Let's see here. All righty. Frank is on. What's up, Frank? There's Tyler. Russell, what's up, buddy? There's Stacy. Uh, Chris is on. Got to see you earlier, or well, I guess maybe later last week, early this week. Uh, Sam's on. I can finally watch the show live. There we go. See? Eight o'clock's working out for everybody. It's already worked out. <laughs> Dale's on. Dale, is Denise there? I know she says she goes to bed early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Like and share, Taylor. Thank you, Dale. We appreciate that. And I need a drinky. There you go. Richard's on. What's up? Phyllis, how you doing? Derek's on. All right. So we got a few people. Got a few people. We're we're missing a few. We we figured this eight o'clock was gonna throw everybody for a curveball, but um you know what? It is what it is. That's uh I think this is gonna be a good good or do it's working out good for us so far. We'll see how it works out with everybody else. What do you think? It's prime time time slot. Prime time, eight o'clock. I mean, that's yeah. that's when everything starts to happen, we right? Just, we just blow YouTube up and do our own thing and tell them what they're going to do for us. And we chose eight, and they said, "Fine, do yeah. it." Yeah, yeah. They didn't even put up a fight because we tell. That's right. YouTube, <laughs> yeah. what to do? They didn't put up a fight. <laughs> oh, Dale says Denise is on. She's in the other room. All right, mm -hmm. cool beans. And then Jason and Elizabeth on. All right. 
I made it just in time. There we go. Good deal. Well, there's there's plenty of time. We're not in a rush anymore. You know, we don't have to hurry it up. We don't got to get to the Blackwater for the close. So that's great. There she is. There's Denise. <laughs> All right. Good deal. All right, John. So let's uh, let's kind of get into it here a little bit. We've got uh, we got some things coming up. We got uh, we got the old spring fling coming, John. Mm -hmm. You expi are you excited about the spring fling? Sure. Sure? Sure. Sure? Doesn't sound excitable. Are you full? I'm full. <laughs> Maybe we're going to have to fast <laughs> or get it to go. Well, I need to fast. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I'm a fat ass. I need to fast. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about the second annual Spring Fling going to be held May 7th at the plantation at Crystal River around the Tiki Bar in the pool area. Um... We did our first spring fling last year in spring. We've done uh, shindigs, several of them now, and we usually, usually do those in the fall, but we're doing spring fling in, uh, in May. So definitely looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, what is it? It, it? It's a party, John. It's getting everybody together from the show. Uh, everybody's invited, uh, you know, bring a friend, um, hell, if you're staying at the plantation, come hang out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we, uh, we, we, we talk to you guys for a little bit. There's lots of captains that show up. There's a lot of people that got fishing in common. So it's great to get along and meet all the tailors. It's great to talk to everybody. Um, man, it's fun. You, you want us to play a game, so we're going to do a game. We'll probably do several rounds of this game and then have a, a, a championship a round finale. off, you know, something to that effect. So that's fun. We're going to have DJ Captain engineer Susie B turning the turntables and uh, maybe even getting a karaoke set up. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I wish I could sing. But I wish it was a ball. I can't, I but wish I it was still taller. do it. Yeah? No. Oh, no. no, no. You wish you, you were taller? Jesus. No. no. God. No. No. <laughs> no. No. You'd be hitting things when you this, walk this, indoors. This, this poor head you has enough You know, that's probably dents. why you don't have hair. It knocked it all no, out when knocked, you walk through the door. Knocked Whack. all the hair off. There we go. <laughs> Ah, uh, so speaking of the spring fling, we're going to have uh, raffles, and we've already confirmed a few of the raffle items already. We've talked to, to Mario. He's going to have a, uh, a charter. We've talked to uh, Black Dog Charters right here in uh, Yankee Town. We spoke with him today. Uh, Plantation is putting together a nice little package for us. Uh, Captain's Cove obviously will have something. Stacy and Jeanette Photography is going to have, I think, not one, but two uh, large canvases she's going to give away. Uh, native nautical mailboxes. We got one of those um, seahorses. So everybody liked the seahorse. So we've got another one of those. That's going to be off for raffle. Um, confirmed today with Jim's Jigs. He's going to have lots of five pack um, giveaways again. Uh, Fillets all blades. Talk to them. Uh, they're going to give away some blades, and um, we're going to try to do what we normally do: put a package together and have the saw, you know, with it. So that's fun. So those are just the ones that we've confirmed. If you'd like to donate something or, or you want to raffle something off, please get in touch with John and I, and so uh, we and we're definitely going to get your name out there. Uh, everybody that donates something will have their uh, logo on the banner. Uh, we have a big banner that we print up for each one of these things, yeah, so it'll I'm be on sure the banner. I'm sure Country Girl Salon's going to give something. Oh, well, good. And I'm sure John always digs something out. You always seem to find something. Yep. I'm out sure of there, all I'm the sure stuff that you have. So sure there's something. <laughs> there we go. So, mm -hmm. so like like I said, looking forward to this. It's going to be a big party. We want to have um, you know everybody come out and see us. Uh, if you need to stay the night and you want to book a room for the plantation, let me know because we can get you a discount code for that as well. So uh, I need to book my room. I haven't booked a room yet, you know, either. And I think uh, I'm going to want to chillax and maybe even sleep late <laughs> the next day because we tend to have some fun. But that'll start at seven. And then it got it's got to get quiet around ten because yeah. uh, the noise ordinance doesn't mean you got to go, but we got to yeah. we got to tone it down a little bit. We will party quietly. I think, I think last year we, we finally 
we finally left after the fifth time security <laughs> asked us to leave. <laughs> Look, so. you hosers, you gotta go. <laughs> Listen, mister, don't, don't mess with us. We're drunk. I don't <laughs> understand what you talking about. Go. We're staying here. <laughs> we were polite drunks. We're staying. No, you got to go. <laughs> this is one of the few times where John does drink. You know, so you got to keep an eye on John. You know, he uh, once or twice a year for our our parties, uh, he he does uh, consume a few, few adult beverages, and uh, and it's a good cause. And again, uh, all the benefits or profits for this are going to help uh, John and I get uh, some new camera equipment and things to do some stuff we talked about last week. We're going to start doing some YouTube production videos. Uh, people have always wanted to know what it was like to just kind of hang with John and Eric when they're fishing, and uh, you're going to get to see some of that as we go to some pretty cool locations, do some filming, and uh, hopefully turn out a really nice, <clears throat> pretty cool fishing show. We're heading you know. to Panama. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> make up a song for that too no. <laughs> we're gonna pull a panama no we're not yeah, yeah. we're not gonna pull a panama we're not my boat not my boat john what movie's that from <laughs> i know i know oh that was good that i love that movie that's from every time it comes, yeah that's yeah. the hair every time it comes on i watch that movie he goes we're gonna pull a panama they go wait wait a minute that's no that's my boat <laughs> There we go. All right, John, moving on. So Mario Fish Talk Seminar, speaking of over there, the plantation. So I believe it's, I think it's this next Tuesday coming up. It's always the last Tuesday of the month. Yep. And I think Tuesday that is next month. Tuesday. So uh, so that's going to be pretty cool. I think they got Captain Zach uh, talking at this one. Yep. And uh, him with his uh, gorgeous long hair and, uh, you know, got a little hair envy there, you know, being as if this is all shiny. <laughs> <laughs> so he's always got something good to talk about and uh, i'm sure that that's going to be fun uh let's see where we got cobia contest john yeah so, this is amazing so captain's cove uh, has been putting on this cobia contest for about as long as they've been putting on their redfish contest so what do we got here john first prize this go round. shimano rod with a twelve thousand reel Paracostas or Smiths and an AFCO gaff, you know, so that's not too bad. No, that's um, excellent. You know. And then several other prizes to follow. Uh, let's see, there is a purchase required. So you got to sign up each morning at the bait shop and you have to purchase something, you know, so even if it's like a 50 cent bobber, you got to purchase something. Captains and employees are not allowed to participate. All right. And fish must be weighed in at Captain's Cove out Outfitters during normal business hours. Fish must be weighed in by 9 a.m. the next day after registering. So there you go. So cool. So I guess this starts April 22nd and ends May 21st. So uh, he's been putting this on for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, it's about as long. Yeah, about as long as he has the uh, the trout one. The trout and, and yeah. the redfish. Yeah. So. Uh, Pretty cool. You come, you sign up in the morning when you come get your bait, and then... Uh, you can win a bunch of prizes. Yeah, then you have the ability to win a bait. You, yep. you got to catch one of them. You got to catch a big Kobe. You got to <laughs> catch a big one. So generally, I think he, he starts it usually at the beginning of May, but the story is the Kobe are showing already up. showing up, John. Yep, they've already yep. showed up a little yep. bit. So uh, there's been a couple of big ones. Uh, if you look at Captain's Cove uh, page, there's been a couple of big ones already uh, turned, not turned in, but, but caught. you know, caught. So uh, I think he said, we're going to go ahead and start it early. So uh, so that's cool. Let's see. Let's look at the comments, John. Let's see if we got anybody else on here. Let's see here. So Jessica's joined us. What's up, Jessica? Yeah, there we go. So, all right. So we don't have a whole bunch of people, John, yet. Eight o'clock might have thrown some people for a loop, but, uh, you know, it, it's got to take a little bit to catch on, John. It's mm -hmm. going to take a little bit to catch on. We've been doing seven o'clock for over three years now. <laughs> so we, we'll see. But I can tell you what will happen or what will help. So if you guys hit that subscribe button right there on the old YouTuber right there, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell and, you know, hit the like. Hit the like. It gets more people watching the show. It helps the analytics of the show. And then the more the analytics go up, the more YouTube does its thing to, to get the show out there. And, um, you know, more people get to see all of this. All of that. 
of it. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. <laughs> All right, so Dan, John, we 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 move right along. I, I think after we eat, we're like we're on a mission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's get into where we at. We are at Captain's Corner. So Captain's Corner, everybody's the captain of their own vessel, John. So essentially, what we do is Captain's Corner. If you've never seen it before, is you sending us a little fifteen to thirty second video of you just giving a fishing report. Um, you're the captain of your own vessel, so basically we want to know what you're fishing with, what you caught, how you caught it, maybe what bait you were using, and uh, maybe where you were at. No, we don't want your spot, but, you know, just kind of give us a rough idea. Nice little fishing report. I want their spot. Well, of course you do. No. <laughs> so, Can't get in that shallow water these people are in. There you go. <laughs> so speaking of shallow water, uh, Jessica has sent us another one. She is at Captain's Corner regular now. So let's uh, let's take a look at hers. Here we go. Jessica, Captain's Corner, fishing North Chaz. It was low tide this morning. About an hour ago it was high tide. Caught a nice 28 and a half off the new Daiwa and the new Shimano. Um, on a little john shrimp for some redfish and I literally just tossed out and got a 26 inch redfish good day <laughs> all right so good job there Jessica she put the fish right on top of them beers did you see that she did. that's yeah. what I'm talking about that's, it's not a beer unless they, it tastes fishy they say that's amazing when you put your beer in the same cooler as your fish <laughs> then you're amazing so evidently she's amazing <laughs> that that is I mean that that you know back in the day we just rolled with one cooler that's you right. know so I mean the fish and coolers. everything you know you had the bait in there the you had food. the fish in there everything and was it in all there. tasted fishy and it all tasted fishy well it so did if you did well if yeah. you didn't do well if you didn't it didn't do well it tasted fine. all right yeah. you know now I know why nobody wanted to catch fish they wanted to keep that peanut butter and jelly tasting like peanut butter and jelly and not fish there you go oh man there we go so uh thomas is on now what's up guys good talking to you earlier this week uh eric thanks again yep so so thomas reached out and uh just had some questions so we gave him a little sidebar counsel on uh what we thought might help him out he's uh he's venturing from that yankee town water to some of that cleaner stuff down south so we we tried to give him some tips and tricks on uh you know try to catch some fish down that way so um We'll see if that uh, works for him. You know, that's uh, like I said, it's uh, that's that's cool that uh, he reached out. Doug's on. What's up, buddy? Jessica says she just washes it off in the ocean. There you go. Jessica, don't wash it off. You you got to enjoy the no, fishy that's flavor. Salt. That's salt for the beer. I guess if yeah, she's drinking that's Corona like, that's or That's like Dos putting Equis salt on the beer. Good yeah, to go. Yeah. She knows exactly what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, looks like uh, Frost might be on there. All right. So, so folks are trying to they're, they're remember it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's 8 o'clock. <laughs> they're slowly. I was slowly watching my soap it. opera, and then I realized. Are there soap operas on at night? I don't know. I know Dallas used to be on at night yep. and, and Falcon Crest. And then they all but do died. But do they do? Yeah, they, they, they all died. They all did. <laughs> Depressing, John. Yep. That's age. <laughs> That's age, man. That age caught them. Yeah, well, age catches us all, John. So, all right. So, where are we at? That, that puts us at the belt, John. Holy cow. I can't believe we're, we're moving. Right we're, we are moving right there. Eight o'clock has put a new spring in our step right here, John. <laughs> so here we go so the belt off to the belt john you want to explain what the belt is so the belt is down here at captain's cove where if you win the fish of the month size wise with your picture and your uh your ruler and you win the fish of the month you get to go on the back wall back here at captain's cove with uh, your picture on the uh belt which is a world wrestling federation belt and uh, it's pretty amazing and I bought the belt, and Eric made this beautiful wood thing, and it's all together in one piece. And all you got to do is catch the fish, take a picture of it. Everybody does that. And then put it on a stake to see if it's legal or not legal or overslot or whatever. Send it in to Eric, and you can win. So simple. Best part of it is it's bragging, bragging rights. rights. Yep. It's like winning a, I won like the winning belt. a tournament every month. <laughs> there you and go. Not winning any prize except for a picture. <laughs> and bragging that there you, you did it and yep. nobody else did. Well, we always start off you're the— you're awesome, there and they're go. not. We always start off the belt with our current winner. So That's there's Samuel right there with a 40-inch nice nook. He's done something I haven't done, John. Yep, He's in part of the 40 club. I'm yep. stuck on that 39-something. 
It's I frustrating, want in the 50 John. 50-inch club. It's frustrating, John. <laughs> I want in the 50-inch club. So it's congratulations. That, that's our current winner right there. But uh, we're looking for triple tail this month. Mm -hmm. Triple tail is the fish. They're going to start showing up too soon. And, well, I, I think they're already coming they're already around because yeah. Tyler's got one right here. Look at yeah. this right here. So Tyler went out and busted one, I guess this was last week or the week yeah. before there, and 21-inch uh, triple tail. That's a nice one. So 21-inch triple tail is what it's going to take to get yourself on the board right now for the belt. I mean, that is um, that's a nice fish. It's a nice triple tail. Um they do make them bigger here. Oh, yeah. I have seen them bigger here, oh, yeah. but that is a nice, nice fish. I caught one last year with Tyler that was bigger. Now, Tyler, was he three in a row? Yes, he has gone three in a so row. So he's gone three in a row. But then he lost to Andrew twice. But, it, well, he has in the past. Yeah. But, um, or what, no, he wasn't three in a row. He's three times. Three times, yeah. So this, this if, if two if, in if, a row. If, yeah, if nobody beats him. This this will be his fourth one, which will put him in the all time all time leading, leading fishing bragging Tyler man award. <laughs> Amazing, and I mean he just started fishing two weeks I know. ago. Yeah, I mean, that's he's a... not even been fishing long. <laughs> yeah, that, that dude just bought a boat and already won tournaments and stuff. It's amazing what he does. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Got to beat Tyler. Need to beat twenty one. And yeah, don't give me twenty-one and a quarter. You know, let's let's beat Tyler. Tyler almost had a crown. Triple crown. Sp crown sponsorship. Oh, crown! Oh, crown royal. But he quit drinking it, <laughs> so they dropped him. <laughs> That's what happens. Well, he can make a nice suit out of all the little bags that come. You know, and you know that, that those are oh, pretty colors. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of cool. There we go. All right, John. Bonnie time with State Farm. Give Bonnie a call, 352-484-0905 if you want to save some money on your insurance. I don't care if you're talking about your boat, your house, your auto, your life insurance. Bonnie will do everything in her power along with her team to save you guys some money. So Bonnie's been a longtime sponsor of the show, and... Uh, we are sponsoring pretty much, I guess you could just call it a photo contest. Uh, basically, we wanted to see your fish from this month. Uh, just you holding the fish, and, and you send it to us. You send them in at uh, CaptainEricHasty at gmail.com, Shasty McNasty Fishing on Facebook, or you can text them to 352-220-3206. Um, send in your picture. And I think this go-round, all we're going to do is take everybody that sent in a picture. We're going to put their name in one of these good old Captain's Cove buckets right here. And draw We're going to do a big raffle drawing style kind of thing. And you're going to win a chicken stick. What a nice, it looks like they've thrown in a little State Farm koozie right there. Yep. Got some American flags America. on it. America. America. I like that. And a nice Danco. This is usually the old... Uh, Holiday special right here, but uh, Jim's been able to keep them in the stock or in the store here uh, as of late. So those are uh, those are real cool, and those are uh, those are pretty sharp. That big knife in there, I, I've cut myself once with it, so now I'm scared. I've only I don't I don't even think I've cut myself with the fillets all blade. I know I you have, have, I have, but I, I don't think I have with the fillets all blade. Sharp, and, uh, sharp, sharp, sharp. But I cut myself no. with one of them Danco's just. Being stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Be careful with knives. There Don't play go. with knives, kids. Yep. Yep. Not, knives will cut you. Yeah. <laughs> knives are bad. Especially a dull one. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of these pictures here. So we've got uh, we've got Tyler, David, and Denise on, on this group of photos right here. And uh, Denise had sent me a message. She says, do these pictures got to be current? I said, well, I would prefer they be, you know, this month. And she says, all right. I went and got you a fish picture. <laughs> well, good deal. So. When Eric twists your arm and makes you go fishing. You know, how bad is that? You know, <laughs> I made them go fishing <laughs> so she could have a picture. How of horrible of you. <laughs> oh, Lord. Then we've got. Uh, oh, my God. We got Frost, who recently went fishing, mm -hmm. caught, I think he said that was his personal best. Yeah, that was a nice red. We got Jason in there, and we got Jessica. What a nice little happy Easter. Uh, you know, a little, uh, you know, that thing was, down you there know what that's bottom, for you know, right so. there. You know why that's there? Proof that she caught it. 
Oh, you during, see during that? Month? Huh? Yeah. Jessica, yeah. look yeah. at yeah. Jessica yeah. go right. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. I caught that this month. <laughs> Boom. Easter. <laughs> there we go. And who, well, here we go. We got some more. We got uh, Jim of Jim's Jigs right there. Oh, nope. he, he got him. Do you, do you think he caught that on a Jim's Jig? I don't know. If he was using a mission fishing jig, I'm going to have to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> he better not have been. Then we got Phyllis with a snook right there. She she messaged me. She said, is this good enough for the contest? I said, yes, Absolutely. it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and then we got Rhonda right there with Jim's Jigs, and she's got a nice uh, nice red I'll bet you well. she was using a Jim's Jig. She better. <laughs> I'll bet you she was. <laughs> I'll bet you she may even know how to make one. There we go. <laughs> well, yeah, so so last week the odds were looking real good in Tyler's favor, but uh, now they now went downhill. It's spread out pretty good. <laughs> They've gone downhill. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, last but not least this week, we've got uh, Stacy and Thomas right there. They, they sent in some picks, a nice snook and a uh, big old fat trout right there with uh, with Thomas. So so the pictures are coming in, John. Nice. So that was, uh, you know, Tyler thought he was going to get that all wrapped up, but it doesn't look like that happened. Not quite. So, not to say he won't win. That's right. He's still you got know, a chance. But, uh, still. Everybody, everybody sends in a picture, gets a chance. So you're you saying know? there's a chance. Oh, oh yeah. One in a million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jessica says she loves that knife set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Let's... Uh, Ah, I haven't had a drink in three weeks. Well, there wow. you go, Tyler. See, they wow. dumped him. Crown yeah. dumped him. Man. <laughs> He's no longer sponsored by Crown. <laughs> oh, man. Bonnie says we made it. Had to catch a loose horse. Oh, that's never any fun. Oh, Bonnie. I've done this late at night. Luckily, the horse was uh, done long before that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, oh. in the daytime, it's way easier to catch them than it is at 3 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've chased after several down the road at 3 in the morning. I, I have not. No fun. So no I, would fun. Not, I would not know anything about that. No, I do and don't like it. Yeah. Why? Why don't they come? Don't you? Don't you rattle the feed or something, and well, they come running? Well, usually to you? what would happen is it's lightning. They they would make me put their horse out at night, but if it ever started lightning, no matter what time it was, I had to go put them up so they didn't get struck by lightning. Yeah. Because they had four shoes on, they were jumping horses, and they were valuable. They didn't want no lightning touching their horse. Well, that seems and then like the sense. horses. Guess what? They don't want to be caught in a lightning storm because they're yeah. already freaking out. So they're running around the field. I'm out there running around the lightning. It's like this is great. <laughs> Not when really. There's lightning. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and right, the thunder John. rolls. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So there we go. So again, check out Bonnie with State Farm. Give her a call. Uh, she's gracious enough to uh, sponsor this and, and a lot of other things for us. So uh, we, we do appreciate that. So, John, let's hear a word from our folks over there at Salt Line. All right. <laughs> All right, big shout out to Salt Light there. They uh, they were gracious enough to pick up old Shasty McNasty fishing, which means they've uh, picked up Weeby Tail and Daboot. So uh, big shout out to them for doing that. Um, we mentioned it last week, and uh, we we talked about we were going to talk about upcoming tournaments. So Salt Life has paired up with um, basically I guess Fishing Chaos to come up with a virtual tournament. And this thing's going to be pretty neat. Um, when does it start? It starts in May. May. So it's a it's oh, a the whole, all, the whole month of May. Uh, and my understanding is is there's like a, a redfish category, a trout category, I think a flounder category, and then a, a largemouth bass. Oh, wow. So um, it's free to enter. Uh, go to the link in the description of this video right here. Uh, click on the link and then sign up. For Salt Life, one of the very last questions that is on there is where did you hear about it? I'd appreciate it if you put Captain Eric Hasty or Shasty McNasty Fishing in there because uh, they are keeping track of that. So uh, that would be nice, uh, you know, to get a little recognition right there. So um, it's cool. They've, they've got a pro staff division, so I have signed up for that. And uh, I think we got Jessica signed up for it. I think she messaged me. Um uh, a couple other people I saw, um, you know, signed up, uh, you know, as well. So, uh, like I said, I, I believe it's free. 
Uh, just takes a few minutes to sign up, and like I said, it'll be through the whole month of May. So that nice. that ought to be neat. I'd love to see somebody from the Nature Coast here, you know, win this win thing. Win something, you know? that yeah. be nice. So that would be that would be pretty snazzy, John. Pretty snazzy there. Let's see who I, I think I saw somebody else in there. Put the fish on a stick. That's right. <laughs> Donna's on there. Oh, she said something, but took it back. I guess. <laughs> Donna, you silly girl. <laughs> she says she thought Tyler might have been joshing us a little bit. No, there. no, no, no. Tyler's legit. Ty He's too legit. He, he to was. Quit. He was not. He was legit to quit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. And uh, we we've been doing this the last few weeks since we picked up Salt Life as well. Uh, essentially, we give you a code. It's a one-time use code. So the first person that uses this code gets 20% off their Salt Life order from saltlife.com. So basically, you you get to where you go to check out and you place this code in there. It's CC20 Q65DDJ. That will get you 20% off your order. As I said before, this is a one time use. So whoever uses it first, that's who gets to 20% off. It's dead after that. It won't work. So again, CC20Q65DDJ. And that'll get you up to 25% off, or 20, I'm sorry, 20% off on uh, saltlife.com. So. Pretty cool right there, in addition to, you know, what we give away later, too. Oh, no, there goes the freezer. <laughs> there goes our sound quality. <laughs> so, all righty, John, so let's talk a little bit of fishing. We did a little bit of uh, fishing this go-around here. Um, you got out on your, your normal um, Saturday and, and, and Sunday there. I think Saturday you ended up having to fish all by your lonesome. But you did all right, John. Yep. You know, I did okay. that's uh, it's a nice snook. Yep. And a gar. Yep. And a big old red. And a little old red. Was it a little red? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Well, the one was big and the one was decent. Yeah, okay. But the yeah. one just made the other one look real small. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what looks really good about these, John? Hmm. You're not in there. That was just me. <laughs> that was just me. <laughs> So you were fishing by yourself, and I understand that it is hard to sometimes, you know, take a picture of a fish, you know, while you're by yourself. It uh, is. Um, a lot of people use a timer on their phone, and they try to set up the phone, but of course you're in the boat, and it's rocking, and the phone falls over. It's hard. It's hard to even get the fish in the well, net. I think I, you said you broke your net broke that day net. trying to yeah, do that. I have to know? get a new net, but I like to get the fish caught, get him quick, and then get him back released so I don't mess with him too much. I don't want him to die. Yeah, there you go. Especially a 37-inch bull like that. I don't want to get it back for sure. Yeah. That's your breeders. Yeah. Jessica wants to know how you got the gar. Cool. So, oh, cool. Cool. yeah. So, <laughs> that was, that gar was friendly, believe it or not. It came up to the side of the boat. I reached under his belly, picked him up. He did not do anything. I cut the line real quick, took a photo, laid him down. He was good. And, boy, when I let him go, he decided to show me that he wasn't a slouch. He splashed me. So it could have happened, but but he waited until I don't know if he was just a happy dance, me letting him go, but but he 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 was great, one wonderful guard, one of the easiest ones I've ever messed with. You so. really like the coloration. You really like the way those fish look. Oh, I know I love I, for for years yeah. you've told me you like to take pictures I like of gar. gar. Yeah, and uh, they are a very odd. They're an odd fish. fish. I mean, I I catch one about every three months yeah. that'll hit my bait, and I catch them and. A lot of them get off the hook or it wraps around their nose, and I don't even really hook them. They come in with it wrapped around yeah. their nose because they do a little couple turns, but I, I enjoy the gar. You know? yeah. I, I enjoy every fish I catch except for the catfish and the thing right <laughs> those, those two can go wherever. They can go away yeah. as far as I'm concerned. So here you go, a little tip for you here, John. Jason says, I video the screen, or I video, then screen shoot a pic, you know, when fishing solo. So he puts the phone on video mode, and then, you know, yeah, so there, yeah, there you I, go. I, then then screenshot, you know, a single frame. Oh, so, yeah. So there you go, a little tip for everybody nice. right there. Nice. All right, see, learning things, yeah. learning things. But uh, where did it go? So you did a little uh, Sunday trip as well, and I think you had Missy out with you there. So... Uh, interesting, sheep's head. So sheep's head are working their way back inshore. That, yep. That's neat. 
Um, big old Jack there for Missy, and uh, imagine that. Missy's got a flounder. We might be talking about something like that here in a little bit. Yeah. And um, was that a keeper size snook right there? 27 and a half, 28 inches. All right, he so, was right, so there. right right there. I didn't pinch yeah. his tail or nothing. I just yeah, took well, a picture. Well, I mean, you get... don't keep him anyway, yeah, I... but I mean, I'm just curious for size. Yeah, it looked like close. a nice fish. It was close. Yeah, yeah. yeah you so. saw me catch him. Easy now. We can't be giving away those secrets. Gotcha. <laughs> you were sitting on short you point saw, when you saw me you catch it. You saw me catch it. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me catch it on long point. <laughs> long point, short point, one of them points. Somewhere. Point somewhere. <laughs> so you speak of that, and everybody gives you hell for fishing some of these places, but when there's no water, where are you supposed to fish, John? I don't know. I guess they yeah, have no. another spot they haven't told me about where yeah. you're supposed to go. So... You know, here it is. We're, we're trying to get rid of these negative tides, and yeah. and for the most part, they should be gone. But, but when you still behold, get these northeast winds blowing that water out, <laughs> yep. if you're gonna fish, you got to fish where the water is. That's right. You know, and um, you know, I know that's made fishing down south difficult. Uh, yeah. It's been a late afternoon bite. You know, so the morning bite for the most part has, has not been, been successful. Uh, it's been that late afternoon bite that has worked out really well for us here, and and I mean that's like leaving you know, 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. It's the afternoon bite that, you know, is doing okay. So I um, had a trip on Thursday. Here we go. Let's see. Boom. So had a nice little family out on Thursday and we, uh, we started out south. We went down south and we were looking for some of these reds and I think we hooked into one or two of them. They just couldn't keep them stuck. Um, we decided let's uh, let's just go bend the rods, and we got up and we got on some nice sized trout. Got the got some jacks. We got into some snook. So uh, just just a lot of fun, um, you know. When you especially when you got a kid on the boat, if you can keep the rod bent over, that's what they're looking for. And you uh, know, we had a really good time. Now Friday, uh, I did not have a trip. I was doing a little bit of work on the boat. I changed not just the the water pump but the whole water pump kit so kind of pulled everything apart on that and got it back together and towards the end there just happened to have somebody over at the house was uh was doing some electrical for me as well and um yeah he helped me finish put the put the back on but i had the old salty boat man was in there doing a little bit of electrical uh now that he had some time, you know, doing a couple of things different that, um, you know, we did in a hurry to get this boat in the water last year. Well, now that we had a little more time, uh, he come and kind of made some things a little bit better for me. So that worked out. And, uh, you know, if you need any, you know, electrical work like that, you know, salty boat man, or salty boat man that's frost on, um, on uh, Facebook there. And uh, he is one of our tailors and one of the good friends of the show. I think he's and, taken on now doing uh, stereo systems. I saw that. Yeah. I did. You know, so, so he looks he, like that's another thing he's taken on now. So for a stereo system, the, might want to call them. Got the boat, the boat that goes boom. The boat that goes boom. <laughs> there we go. I remember that song. Yeah. I got the boat that goes boom. <sighs> The car that goes boom. Yep. Yeah. Oh, is, is that Tina and Bunny and they yeah, like the Tina boom and or Bunny something? Yeah, Tina and Bunny and I like the boom. The guys that go boom. Oh, that was good stuff, John. Let's see. If you played that on the boat, I'd be like, all right. I played it. Really? I played it on boat. Oh, yeah. Was oh, yeah, there? yeah. That was one of the songs on the thing. I think your <laughs> wife was on the boat when she turned around and looked at me like, are you serious? I, I like the boats that go boom. There you go. So, but, uh, yeah, we had the... You know, so I've got that Suzuki, John, and when you go to put that lower unit back in there, um, not only, you know, do you, do you get the shaft, uh, the drive shaft, but you've got the um, the shift bar in there as well. And trying to get all that to line up just right with the stars all by yourself, you know, it's kind easy. of a pain in the ass. So needed uh, need a little assistance, and uh, Frost was there to give me a hand with that. So that all went back together well, and everything's great. Nice. <laughs> Boat's running fine, peeing like a dream. You know, I've never changed my plugs on my boat i've never changed my water thingy thermostat or whatever that thing is uh, yeah yeah so when you go to buy john's used jump <laughs> hey it works perfectly <laughs> why why mess with a good thing that's right, right. right. that's my plugs learned. working like a charm i have learned the more you mess with an outboard, the less that sucker runs. Yeah, uh -huh. The leave it alone and run it, and it works. But you can't let it sit. 
Yeah. You know, that's the thing about an outboard, man. They, the more you run them, the more better, the mo better they are. <laughs> that, the that, mo that, better. There is some mentality in that right now, there. Now my stereo don't work no more, but <laughs> <laughs> the boat don't go boom. There we go. So John had another little family outing uh, Saturday right there, and uh, and they had a blast. Again, we kept the, the rods bent, and uh, and look, there, there's another one of them flatfish, yeah, flat you know, fish. down there. So they, yeah. there, there could be a thing going on mm, here. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So we had a good time there um sunday we went out and uh they, they, they these guys have become regulars uh john i've had out with me now this was his third trip in less than two months and his second trip in less than a week and a half and uh they said look we want to let's do something a little bit different than we did last time i said all right i said my my good buddy john says uh big fish are biting right now on big bait so we got a new cast net you know, um, I cost you money <laughs> through 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 the cast net for the first time since last year or last season, and um, still got it. We got some really nice bait, some big bullet, and um, didn't tear up the net. You know, it was real it's good. It's always a bonus. When, when the season starts, it seems like I go through two nets a month. But yeah. so far, you know, no, nothing wrong with the net after a few throws. Just go so around. far, so good. So we went and soaked some big baits and. Uh, and the results were there. We got a nice 33-inch redfish that uh, he was just tickled to death with. And then we caught a uh, keeper snook. And uh, we uh, we caught a bunch of big Jack Cravels. And uh, they had no interest, nor was I, you know, in taking <laughs> pictures of them. But, but, uh, but I mean, you you know, and not to put down the Jack Cravel. Pound They're for amazing. pound, <laughs> they are some of the biggest fighting fish, fight. you know, that we, we have in this area. I mean, they are fantastic to catch. But... There's always that little sigh of disappointment that it wasn't a snook when you get them up alongside the boat, you know. So, so each each to their own. But great fighting fish. Great fighting not, fish. Not not putting the fish down. It's just it's just not what folks were wanting. <laughs> yeah. So, um. Yeah. There we go. So that was uh, that was our fishing trips right there. And like I said, it it kind of blended into what we wanted to talk about. Um, there was. A few flounder caught, you know, all over the the course of this, and we caught a bunch of flounder and missed a bunch of flounder the week before. So, flounder, as we could recall, is a fish that I think you and I have not spoke to coming up. Nope, and or, or, or at all, whether it was on Facebook or, or we've done it, you know, here yet. So we wanted to talk about that, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about that here coming up after John talks about to hook it for habitat. All right, so King. May 21st, 2022, in the Gulf of Mexico. My wife's holding a tournament Gulf with a habitat. Mexico. Hooking for habitat. Fishing tournament. And it's redfish, trout, cobia, catfish, and the old ugliest fish. Now, there's trophies for all these classes, I think, except for the ugliest fish. And people have come from all over just to try to get the catfish because these, these are painted trophies, and they're really, really nice. The lady that makes them does a fantastic job. This tournament gets you fed... Friday night at the captain's meeting and also gets you fed lunch at the weigh-in at which is at Cape beautiful downtown English captain's cove. Um, it's, it's affordable tournament to fish with. There's prizes for the kids. Jim and I have already gotten six rods and reel combos together for the kids. And who knows, there may be more. Um, that's just one of those deals, you know, that you never know what's going to happen here at Jim's. I mean, just out of nowhere, a cast net might be flying and get you. You never know. That'll hurt. Yep. <laughs> no, it, it'll, it'll, fly, it'll fly into your hand so you can take it oh, home and throw oh, it. So you, still you just in never the box. know. Still in the box. Yeah. I mean, there's there's just going to be great things happening. And uh, there's lots of raffles, um, giveaways, goodies, um, fantastic food at this thing. This, this, tro this tournament has gotten huge since it first started. Um, and Missy's grown it every year. So May 21st tournament. Ages three to eight, first and second place. Ages nine to 13, first and second place. And who knows, that could turn into third place and third place with John because he'll just go buying rods and reels like crazy. Give them to the kids, you know. But uh, come join us. It's going to be fun. Um, good stuff. There and it go. all goes to Habitat, so you can't beat it. Uh, so, John, we were we were just talking about the old Jack Cravel there, and Roger makes a comment. He says, but I heard Jack was great, you know, sushi. Great would be a stretch. It's good sushi. It's good sushi. I could eat it if I had to. Yep. It was one of the chewiest ones I think that we tried. Yeah. It, it was, <laughs> but if I had to survive, I could, I could eat the hell yep. out of some Jack, you yep. know, sushi. I, I would not go hungry. But uh, I, I, yeah. I will tell you that I gave one to a Chinese lady 
or a Japanese lady, and she cooked it for her people at work, and they were eating it, and they brought me over some at the table and gave it to me, and I tried some, and it was fantastic. Whatever yeah. she did with the spring onions and the things that they do, and did they steam it in the bamboo it basket? Was and all yep. that? Yeah, it they was do a steamed, lot of that. and, yep. and yep. it was fantastic. Oh. So again, they say there's no bad fish, only bad chefs. But yeah. I, yep. <laughs> yep. That's all yep. I got on that one. <laughs> all right, John. I want to talk about uh, Nature Coast PM here for a second because they came in and said, uh, "What do we got to do to to be mentioned on the show?" And you know, I gave them some ideas, and they they bought some of our Weeby Tailing shirts to give away uh, that we've been giving away at the end of the at the show. So we want to talk about Nature Coast PM right here um property management services uh they do from the roof to the ground they do the the roof plumbing sewer landscaping um basically you know manage your building while you're gone you know One whatever the case call. might be yeah so give frank a call at 352-817-2063 and uh give them a shout out they're they're tailors uh they they watch the show uh participate quite regularly that that's frank when you see him on there and uh nature coast pm give them a ring uh new new sponsors to the show so always trying to grow and i love it when there are people that watch the show that is uh even better even better support so them big shout out to them all right John, I think it's about time to get into topics. Let's see if anybody else had any more comments right here. My favorite tournament of the year. All right, cool. I, ref I assume he's talking about the he's hooking, talking for about Habitat. hooking for Habitat. Yeah, there we go. All right. Donna says that was a horrible song. Oh, Donna, oh. I love that song. Oh, it, it, Donna. It, it, it made my buddies two-door Chevy Blazer boom, and vibrate, you know, with, uh, with the 12s he had in the back. I enjoyed I, that. What about Beastie Boys Brass Monkey? Yeah, no. oh, is no, that, I like has that got it going on? Yeah, is that yeah. better? <laughs> there we go. And Dale says, thank you, Nature Coast, uh, for his shirt. Well, yeah, because Dale was a winner two, right. two shows ago, you know, so nice. <laughs> Good job. So... Our, our tailors are so cordial and polite uh -huh. and nice. And they'll and, let you know if they don't like your music choices. They're awesome. They will. Yeah, yep. they, they'll, they'll let you know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> when you come to the party, that uh, yep. I'm going to get Susie to play it. <laughs> <laughs> In uh, your we, name. We have a special request <laughs> for <laughs> Donna Moody. <laughs> <laughs> I like the guys that go boom. Oh, that's, that's funny. <laughs> so, so, John, let's get into it here. Fishing for dogs doormats and 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 un unfortunately we're not talking about the kind you wipe your feet on there and uh and before anybody gets too excited about it doormats is a stretch because i've yet to see a doormat caught here in the nature coast i i think i've seen a bigger flounder caught maybe 20 miles out I've said it was a good size that I would consider a doormat, but if I catch a flounder in this area and he's anywhere to 18 to 19 inches, I'm tickled pink. I mean, that that's the one that's going home, getting stuffed. I caught a 26 incher with Tyler. Were you excited? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> once me and Tyler, I mean, when the fish didn't even fight, it was cold that morning, yeah. oh, and yeah. the fish didn't fight, and we looked down and. I yelled at Tyler to get the damn net. Tyler was yeah. like, why? And he learned around. He went, oh, my God. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Tyler so, even went back to try to catch that fish. I yeah. mean, that fish was the beast. He, he was. It was a beast. I, I, re I remember yeah. we, we, we that, showed it. We, we biggest, saw it on the show yeah, a little while Yeah, ago. that's, that that's was, the biggest flounder. Yeah. I mean, it's not the biggest one I've ever seen here. Now, that's the biggest yeah. one I've ever caught. Yeah. Now, my wife had one that was a door mat. This thing was 36 inches long. There, but, there was a knot but involved there was a, in that. Yeah, I remember was, this story. Yeah, yeah, there, there's there was, a knot yeah. involved in that story. <laughs> After that, my wife <laughs> has learned to tie better knots. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. So I grew up on the East Coast. My, my formative, you know, middle school, high school, you know, early adult years over by St. Augustine, Crescent Beach, all that. Grew up in Palacas. So I'm used to catching doormats. We moved over here. And for years, I'd never caught a flounder. I was like, there's flounder here? I've never, I've never seen, seen a flounder, one. you know? And then and, and you'd see one caught, and I'd be like, that's not a 
flounder, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yep, yep. So there, there are flounder here um, prior to contrary belief. Um, you know, and, and flounder is those little flat pancake fish with eyes on the top of their head. They're beautiful fish. Weird, but beautiful fish. Um, where do you find flounder in this area, John? So when I find them, it's on a sandy bar. There you go. Right next to a grassy flat or a rock pile bar. There you go. So sand to structure. Yep. That's where I find them. Yep. And um, so where do we have that? All over the place. All over the place. We're here. Um, you have <laughs> that might several. That it's difficult to find them. Well, several miles yep. of nothing but rock bars. Yeah. You know, and all sand. these man-made structures. We yep. got plenty of rock with sand falling right, you know, by them. And uh, it's just flounder bury themselves in the sand and they wait to ambush something coming by now typically you're going to have to drag or bounce a bait on the bottom looking for flounder you know you're going to stumble upon these flounder you're you're yeah. just not going to Target throw flounder. the bait out well I, you can throw a bait yeah. out let it sit and catch a flounder that, that can ha that that's, can happen that's rarer you will be more apt to catch that stingray um, you'll be more apt to uh, catch that catfish, yeah. redfish, <laughs> but <laughs> but a stink, but a uh, a flounder wants it moving. He he does. Yeah, they just... but they they want it drug, drug if you will. Yeah. So there's a lot of techniques I like to use on the boat. You know, especially when I'm using a Jim's jig head with a shrimp or or a Jim's jig head with uh, you know say even. Um, I find. And I tried this out this past week, and I didn't get hooked up. I, I didn't have a lot of time to fish, you know, because I had the families, and I had to really kind of stick up. But my, my clients caught shrimp on a jig head. But we lost probably four fish at the boat a couple of trips or a week or two ago using the full size, the five-inch or five-and-a-half-inch DOA. So I wanted to try the smaller one in Glow to see if it would do any different so i did try it i just didn't get to fish it enough to see if they would get the bite but i think what was happening was is the doa the five five and a half was too big too big he was yeah. holding the bait but just didn't have the jig head in his mouth yet so once you started to bring that fish vertical instead of bringing them along he the said, bottom yeah. he just opened his mouth and, 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 they, and they got away so uh, techniques uh shrimp on a jig head works great but it's a drag motion so it's kind of a pop drag let it sit for a little bit pop it along the bottom you know not popping it up just popping it along the bottom move it along the bottom and then let it sit in between pops if you feel like you're stuck in the grass or you feel like it just doesn't want to move i don't care if it is the grass or you're stuck on something try to set the hook on it because nine times out of ten that's your flounder a lot of people will mistake a flounder bite for just being stuck have you found that at all or you know so that's uh so what a mouthy fish yeah so when i know that i'm fishing for them and i know that they're in the area if i feel that kind of like i'm dragging it through some grass like it it doesn't want to let go or it doesn't want to come through i just set the hook and i, and I may bury it in a rock <laughs> you know yeah. that does happen but a lot of the times it's a flounder and um you know flounder are a whole lot like those trout you want to keep that tension on them because they're real good at spitting that hook too you oh, know yeah. so uh so you want to do that um flounder almost have that weird unhinged jaw i mean they can open their mouth really well and if you've got that really big mud minnow mm. or you've got that finger mullet and you've got him out um, there's been several places where that's probably the biggest ones. I, I, I know the one that you were talking about, uh, the the one that the lost due to the poor knot. I think that was on, either on that a was mullet on a or mullet. a mud mud. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, and the one with Tyler was on a mud bin. The bigger the bait, sometimes yep. the you know you're going to get the bigger the flounder. But um, like I said, here lately shrimp on that jig head bumping it along the bottom has been phenomenal uh shrimp with the doa was getting us a lot of bites uh a lot of hook not necessarily hookups but uh client caught one got it in the boat and uh and missed four and again i think it was i think that doa was just a little bit big that's why i'm looking at the, the smaller one to to try that but again we have miles and miles and miles of, of nothing but rock bars surrounded by sand so i mean there are plenty of places to try these techniques and, and, and catch them i know like i said i think i was fishing here 
three or four years, John, before I even caught a flounder. I just was convinced that they weren't here. <laughs> well, so years ago, we'll go back like 30 years ago, there wasn't that many snook here. We would catch them, but it would be late at night, and you heard stories about people catching snook, but it was a very quiet thing. One day, my dad and I were out fishing short point probably 35 years ago, and my dad throws a shrimp out, reels in a flounder, and he goes, wow. He goes, I didn't know we had those. And I, that was that long ago. And I had never seen one. I thought it was the coolest thing. I was, what's that flatfish? And, of course, we let it go. And, and that was the last time I saw a flounder for 10 years. Then all of a sudden, I started catching flounder by fishing spots I'd never fished before. I actually caught my first flounder here offshore using a plastic rubber bait that was a gulp herring, blue and white in a bag. I threw it out the back of the boat, was bottom fishing, and I looked at my pole in the back, and I was like, I think it's hung on something. I just started reeling it in. About that time, here comes up this 20-something inch flounder. I'm like, whoa, look at that. Get the net. Yeah. So we scooped it up, and that was caught in 45 foot of water offshore on a place we've called Skid. And um, never had that happen. Didn't know that that even happened. And we put a big flounder in the boat that day, and I don't even know if I even got a picture of it, but... That was one of the largest flounder I'd ever caught up until the one I caught with Tyler. But, sure. yeah. but they're here, and I was told that during the <clears throat> red tide, a friend of mine dives, and he went out there when the red tide was first starting to happen. And he said when he dove to the bottom in the dead fish, he got to the bottom, he could see for like hundreds of feet dead red, dead red grouper, dead grunts, and he said huge dead flounder, huge. He said they were laying everywhere. So the, the red tide got him, but he said that was the first time he had ever seen something like that because the, the fish were starting to die. So they were raising up out of the sand in the bottom because of their fermenting of their body or whatever happens, and he could see them all. He said he had seen, never seen anything like that in his life, but he said there was lots of them out there. So so they are there, and they are here, but people just got to know how to catch them because you're not normally fishing for them like that no. with the drag technique. So, so Donna asks us, uh, how about shore or pier fishing, um, you know, for those that don't have a boat? So, um, the pier out at Cedar Key. I, yeah, which, that's I a mean, real maybe good place. I, I've seen, I mean, there's been big redfish caught out there, big huge drum. black drum, yep. you know, Spanish mackerel. It's, it, it's kind of muddy. I don't know yep. how sandy it might be, but I mean, it, it'd be worth a shot. And, and, if anything, you'll catch something there. Yep. Maybe that not would, the flounder, but you're going to catch something. I've caught trout there, whiting. No. Yeah. Sharks, stingrays, big drum, big reds. David Hooked Holly has murdered huge fish yeah, there. Oh, yeah. That's one of his favorite spots to go. When when David Hooked Holly shows up at that pier, you might want to go. If he posts <laughs> a picture of him at that pier, then that might be the weekend you decide yeah, to go because yeah. he's got that down pat. Yeah, he, he has got yep. that. He knows that area, and he knows the time those fish run, and that might be a time you're going to go, I think I'm going to go to over there to see the key bearing fish. No. <laughs> so – so John, uh, the, the question always comes up with, um, you know, how do you how do you clean a flounder? And and uh, to me, it's an interesting thing. Well, it is. Uh, so flounder, they. Well, look. Here's an example. Yep. <laughs> so, so on this on this sticker that we'll be giving away here, you know, in a little bit. If you look at this, they've got a line coming right down down the middle of the body right there. That that line kind of represents. Their, uh, their, their their backbone, I guess, you know, the, the spine. So if you'll take your blade and run it straight down that spine and then start working sideways, coming up under, and take one fillet off of one side and one fillet off the other, that's how you get the top off, and then you'll do the same and thing on the on bottom. The bottom. Yep. And if you basically, if you've got a keeper size, which I guess is 14 inches now, if you've got a keeper inch or you've got a keeper 14-inch flounder, you can get four fillets off that fish. Yep. Now your bottom fillets are always going to be a little, uh, quite Thin. a bit thinner, thinner than what the top ones are. But they're are. there. But uh, but they're there. And then, um, like I said, for me, if I catch one in that 19, 20 inch range, I like to to get it to where you essentially take the head off and and, and kind of gut it out, and then yep. take your blade and open it up. Don't don't fillet them out, but open them up, and then shove that thing full of crab meat yep, and, and put just them cook under it. the broil. Oh, oh my man. gosh, oh, yeah, that when, is yeah, When they're 20 inches long, and you stuff him with crab or some uh, shrimp, oh, yeah. oh, man, I had the best flounder I ever had at the Blackwater. I took that thing in there, and she said, let me have that thing, and they filled that thing with a shrimp, bouillabaisse, oh, golly. Yeah, that's good. Woo! Oh, 
So Roger wants to know, are you allowed to keep them again? Yes, Roger, you are. They they shut that season down for 45 days yep. or something. I guess they called it for the spawn or whatever the case might be. But it was uh, it was fantastic flounder fishing yeah. when they, when they shut time. it down. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. It's amazing like the fish called each other and said, yeah. if you're going to eat, eat now. Eat their shrimp now because yeah. they can't keep you. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was it was nuts, but um, yeah. <laughs> so they they are they are open again, and I do believe it's fourteen inches you know, to, to keep one. So, um, like I said, they are here. Um, it's not one that you see a lot of pictures of, but um, like I said, that rocky area with a sand front, yeah. the oyster bar with a sand front, that that grassy area with a sand front, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're going to be in that sandy area very close to structure because yep. they're going to hide in that sand and, they lay and ambush and they their wait, prey. Yep. And they look up like this and they watch. Yeah. And when that bait comes, they go wham, and yep. they've got him. And that's... Uh, and it's just a, you know when They're you have a, a flounder on. You, yeah. you, I mean, it's just that weird feeling. You're like, oh, yeah, this is a flounder. Yep. You yeah. know. <laughs> Eric, Eric knows the bites now. He'll call it. He's like, I'm fixing to get a flounder. Wham. Yeah. He'll set the hook, and he's got a flounder. And Missy's yeah. gotten good at it, too. She knows when she's fixing to catch a flounder. That feels like a flounder's chewing on it. Next thing you know, she's reeling in the flounder. It's like, oh, wow. That's yeah. pretty cool. There we go. All right. So, John, not, not that we're in a rush, but does anybody have any flounder questions? Cause if not, we, we've been away. we've been doing this over an hour already. We're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead and give something away on our our first out of eight o'clock outing right here. You know that's uh, I liked it. Yeah, I did. Oh. Let's see. We'll give them just a second because there is a delay, John. There is a delay. <laughs> we'll give them just a second to see if any questions come in. But I tell you what, while we're waiting on the questions, it doesn't hurt to give a, you know, show everybody what they're going to win. So you're going to win a bag of Bloodstream from our friends at Aquatic Nutrition. Aquatic Nutrition. A killer Dexter knife that there will you cut you if you're not careful. <laughs> a bag of DOAs. Yep. A bag of Jim's Jigs. Nice. A cute little flounder for your pickup truck window or boat. Yeah, and are... a cool little triple tail, which is the fish of the month. These are some new stickers and coming. And a Salt Life Code. There you for go. 20% off. Nice. For the five, first five people to get this incredible question right. Are there, uh, is there, wait, there's more? No, nope, that's, that's it. All right, that's good all deal. Well, getting. I mean, there's a lot there. I'm there's just a lot curious. Yeah. I went fast. All right, cool. Basically, I'm just stalling to see if we get any, uh, questions. any questions coming in here. No, we already taught them everything they needed. Do, do colors matter? So, Chris... We're talking about baits, or are we talking about the? I think jigs. The the, the glow oh, works really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so they like white. I I'm not a firm believer on the jig head color, and I know a lot of people believe heavy in it, but I'll catch just as many with a lead color as I will, you know, any other color. I like pink for this area. I like chartreuse for this area, but I'll still catch them with, you know, gray, <laughs> the, the lead color. So it all, it all depends. Um, people have their beliefs in that and people believe heavy in it. To me, I, I really think their fish are colorblind or hue blind. They, they'll see shades. I don't know that they actually see color. So if you've got something, I know John likes to use a sparkly nail polish. So I think maybe they'll see that sparkle. So maybe it'll have a glimmer, maybe it'll have a shine. And maybe that's something to it there. You know, you catch I, I blind know. fish. I catch fish that can see. Yeah, is that it? <laughs> well, a blind fish finds a, uh, a fish uh, every uh, now and a again. A DOA yeah. every now and then. A DOA every now and then. Even a blind fish can find it. There you go. So uh, what do we got here? They like gold spoons. All right. I've never I've caught never, a flounder on a gold spoon. I've never spoon. hardly caught anything on a gold spoon. Well, you I'm gotta, not saying it doesn't work. you got to throw use them, one. John. you, you got to use, use them one. to catch something on it. There you go. All right. <laughs> Well, good deal. Well, John, we're not going to drag this out anymore, nope. but uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and get ready uh, for tonight's question. Uh, Dale has counted to five for us, and All Denise right. has counted back. So, All I mean, right. they are ready to go to bed. Yep. <sighs> tonight's question is an easy one, and i got to get ready to... It's so easy. i got to get ready to write down the name. So, the first five right answers that we see, that's John and I. <laughs> yep. The first five right answers we see will go into the bucket. I will write them in my left-handed chicken scratch as fast as I can. We got to get a producer, John. We got to get one. 
Where do we get one of those? Where, where, where are these uh, aspiring film students that want to get some? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they're at. <laughs> there we go. So the first five right answers are going to get their name put in a hat, and we're going to draw. So tonight's question. Wow. My spelling check did not work on that. So basically, <laughs> the question is, yeah. what is the date for the spring fling? I need the month and the day, the, the day, I guess, or whatever, the number equivalent. Uh, I need the month and the number equivalent for the, the, the date for the spring fling. Taking answers now. So there's Jessica. She's in real quick. There's Rich. Denise. Did I see Derek and Chris? All right. All right. Thank you, everybody else, for playing. So we've got Chris, Derek, Denise, Rich, and Jessica. All right. We're going to mix them all up. You know what? The good news is, is everybody knew when the date was, John, so this is making me feel that, good. That's a plus. We're going to have great participation. All right. Here we go, John. Tonight's winner is Chris. It is Chris. Congratulations, Chris. Dun, da, da. You will be the winner. Uh, in addition to, Chris, I need uh, to know your shirt size. Yep. So there I, I, knew was that, I knew there was more. There was more. So, I was leaving it for the suspense. I was surprised. <laughs> so from Nature Coast PM, there you go. So good deal. Great, guys. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, again, uh, let us know what you think about 8 o'clock. I think it worked out really well for us. Uh, hopefully everybody else will figure out for sure that it is 8 o'clock. Uh, we... I think it worked out fairly well. I'm I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, you know, we will find more more viewers. Remember to uh, subscribe. I'm just gonna go to sleep in here. You're just gonna take a little nap right yep. here. I'm just gonna go to sleep and <laughs> catch go. I'm good. I like it. I like it. All righty. So good deal. So um, John, yep. you know this we be tailing thing. You know, it is brought to you by Shasty McNasty Fishing, Captain's Cove Outfitters. <laughs> Naughty Tails. Jim's Jigs. Fillets All Blades. Mm, aquatic Nutrition. Plashlights. Mm, carries custom rods and gaps. <laughs> State Farm. Bonnie with State Farm. Caddy Can. Native Nautical Mailboxes. Salt Life. There we go. And a little Nature Coast PM on there, That's too. Right. Now, we'll see everybody nice. next week. Everybody be safe. Uh, remember, we will not have a show next week. No show. Forgot about that. Yeah, here we go.